wish you guys had an organization who mm. would have funded you better. Because mm. this work that you're doing is work that is important and, you know, we would have funded you. Mm. So, um, we talked to a different organization that said that they would support us and uh, that they would host us and incubate us. So, like a f- fiscal and a physical host? Yes. So, All right. Yeah, so they would become our hosts. Mm-hmm. But then when we were, so they were given money by the World Bank so that they could host us and mm-hmm. so on. Money was earmarked for our projects and then mm. we were not allowed to do anything. We were not allowed to, like all the projects that we were doing were not us doing, it was them doing with us as implementing partners. So we couldn't go to a conference and talk about it. We couldn't fundraise for ourselves. Oh, no. Oh, no. We couldn't, like, literally oh, no. it was... Was it a local organization? Uh, yes, and an, uh, it was an African organization. Okay. Um, and eventually, mm. um, they said, you know what, we are taking out, we are... So we eventually quit. Mm. So Jay sent an email and said, no, we are not doing this anymore. Mm. Um, they took half the staff and took all the money. And took all the projects. And told <laughs> us, you guys have nothing. Go. Okay. So we went, we told the remaining team, mm. please go and look for work because, mm. as you can see, this, this is the situation on the ground. The situation on the ground has changed. Mm. So mm. you guys go look for jobs because your families. Mm. Jay and I will go back to what we used to do, mm. or we'll go back to redrawing. These guys refused to, to do that, mm. and they said, we're sticking to this thing. Mm. So oh, nice. everybody still worked for six months or so without any salary. Oh, those are loyal people. So we just said, we are getting this thing done, we're getting it done. And so we got it done. So by this thing, at the time, had, so had you, did, had you called it? This thing, had you called it a name? Had you given it? Yeah, it was Open Institute. It was Open Institute. We had registered Open Institute. So they didn't go with this they, host team? They didn't go with the, the, the organization. Okay. Because right. we were the trustees. Yes. But they went with the money because now they switched off the taps and they took half the team and absorbed them into their into All their, right. Uh, whatever. So Grant is gone. Part of the team is gone. Yes. You guys back the drain board. So we, we start from the ground up. Mm. And I think our very first grant now in as ourselves was mm. I think ten thousand mm. um, dollars, which is like a million shillings. That's a meter, yeah. And we did work. We would do work like crazy. Did I think thirty, forty thousand dollars worth of work with that ten thousand? Mm. And that now began to wake us up to. But so, then, if sorry, we let, let, let's just take, take, take it slow for that. When was that? Who was it by? And what was the? work that you are doing with it so what we did is that we have a project at the open Institute called open county open county mm-hmm. yeah our very first grant that mm. we were ever given was for open county mm-hmm. was for building a platform mm. that allowed um counties mm. to be transparent mm-hmm. funded by it uh, funded by world bank yes all right so now we went to the world bank we met and there was a gentleman there called um robert hunja mm-hmm. Um, who was very senior at the World Bank at the time. Mm. He liked what it is that we were doing. Mm. By the way, when these guys left uh, with the money and everything, they tarnished our reputation across. Oh, So, uh, you so us guys have gone to Washington and we are having to tell people, Aki, just try us. Mm. Yeah, because we are not what you have heard, mm. but we don't want to respond at that level. Mm. Just... Mm. Just try. So it'd been bad mouthed, so it's not working for yes. you even when you're trying to knock on doors. On doors. So, ah, so you're going against the tide completely. completely. Yeah. So eventually now what happens is Robert Hunja, he mm. says... Hunja is a he's, Kenyan? He's a Kenyan, but uh. he works at the World Bank. He, right. he was very senior at the time and he was working on these issues. Yeah. So he just, I think, in my view, just mm. took pity on us. Mm. We'll forever remain grateful to him. Mm. Because I think he just took pity on us and says, okay, I can, I'll find you a little bit of money somewhere. Mm. Just go and do this thing that you want to do, open country. Let's mm. see how it works. Mm. So we go, we do it, it is superb. Mm. So they give us more money to do more. Mm. Give us more money to do more. Mm. So we keep doing it and growing it mm. and growing it. Mm. And eventually we go and sit with the counties and the counties say, you work with all of us or you work with none of us. Mm. So now because they have said that, we are working with all the counties in, um, in uh, Kenya. In the country. Yes. To provide this To provide platform. this platform for transparency's sake. Mm. And just because of that, mm. then we started doing other projects now and mm. we started growing. Mm. So that subnational focus mm-hmm. since 2013 to today mm. 
has been our mm. main thing. Main course, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and since so to, th- with that first grant, it gave birth to yes. And one of the it, so now one of the things that it taught us is, mm-hmm. especially in the civic tech space. Okay. Um, this is important. Mm-hmm. In the civic tech space, the a lot of organizations work, mm-hmm. and I think in a lot of development spaces mm-hmm. also, mm-hmm. a lot of organizations work, and the ones that get especially a lot of money are mm-hmm. the ones who put in a lot of hype. Yeah. But they don't actually get the work done on the, done on the ground. Yeah. We saw an organization um, go to a conference that I attended and post a picture of the uh, long, uh, you know, the long queues for the elections of 2013. Yeah. yeah. So they posted the picture of the long queues of Doni. Uh-huh. And they said that all those people came because of a web, the website they had built that was showing mm. the, it was showing the um, locations of the, of the vote, uh, of the voter registrations and sites, yeah, yes, mm. which is truly oh, not which true. is not their case, yeah. But they said that these numbers, mm. that is what we did, and they were mm. given money. Mm. Mm. So the guys who are doing the actual work tend to be very quiet, mm. and this is why I go back to that thing of civil society organizations mm. and humanitarian organizations need to become a lot, a lot better mm. at making sure mm. that they have marketing capacity. Mm. Now the biggest problem is that a lot of these organizations, they employ communication officers who are junior mm. or who are ex-journalists mm. who may not, who understand communication. But not from a marketing But lens. not marketing. Right. Marketing is about the heart. It's mm. not about the head. Mm-hmm. It's not about giving information. Mm. It's about making people connect with that information. If people don't connect with it, then you haven't really done the marketing work. Mm. So think about it this way. Recently, we went to Taita Taveta, Vihiga, Kakamega counties. This is with Open Institute. With Open Institute now. Mm-hmm. I'm fully now Open Institute. Yeah. In fact, um, what happened is that the marketing agency grew so much mm. that uh, I resigned as CEO. Okay. And I became chair. Okay. Left so, it to someone else to run. And I left it to Conrad. Conrad is running. There. Okay. Okay. But now I'm, I'm fully. In, I'm just on the board. Okay. I don't do the. Okay. Whatever. All right. So now I'm fully open institute. Mm. Now, recently we went to Taita Taveta, Keke Mega, mm-hmm. uh, Vihiga, mm. Migori, mm. and we went to meet artisanal miners. Mm-hmm. And we just wanted to understand what their plight is and mm-hmm. we wanted to understand what it is that they're doing because there's a certain group of people who I think we shall talk about a little bit more mm. who are invisible to the public sector. Mm-hmm. Once we had done that, we then went and counted the number of organized groups that currently exist because artisanal small scale miners we know them in the abstract we don't know them in actual numbers mm-hmm. so we went and counted the actual organized groups mm. and once we did that we um, went ahead and um, so once we had done that we then went ahead and did a report mm-hmm. now normally what happens with these reports is that we print Beautiful reports. Beautiful reports with complex, politically correct language mm. um, and distribute them. Mm. I think our word is disseminate. And disseminate them. They're given a good preface. Yes. They're given, I mean, we, we, a, know, the, yeah. we know the process, yeah. Um, and then we send them to mm. people mm. and those people then put it in their drawers mm-hmm. and don't touch them anymore. Mm. So there's a pile of them. Yes. And they're happy. And they'll For be us, referred we to... Yeah. People don't connect with that. Yeah. So we just built our website. Exactly. And we call it Jonah's Miners. Jonah's Miners. Yes. Mm-hmm. Because Jonah, who passed on last year from COVID, is a person who started this work and who was very passionate about this work with the ASMs. Right. So what we did is that we said, guys, go and look at Jonah's Miners. Mm. The guys that he was fighting for, mm. this is what their plight is, and you'll find it on this website. Oh, that's really interesting. You see that? Mm. So if you go to extractives.org, mm. you see this report as a website. Mm. So you can click through different parts of the report. You can mm. see pictures, you can see mm. videos, you can mm. see different aspects of things mm. in mm. one place. Mm. And what? And, 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 and so the call for action, for instance, for this Jonas Miners, 
or the, for this particular um, is what, what is the call for action for this? The call for action for this one mm. is that there needs to be basically we're saying that there needs to be numbers. Mm -hmm. If we want to change the lives of ASMs and we ASM. want them to artisanal small scale miners mm -hmm. and we want for those guys to be able to have the power mm. then we must count them. Mm. We must know exact numbers how of many how many are. ASMs there are. Uh -huh. We must know how many women, how many men, men. what are their age disparities. Yeah. We must know where they are. Yeah. So that then, even they, when they're given back that data, they can say, uh -huh. Kumbe, we are this many. So we put a f we, 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 we know the, their numbers, we put, we put a face to them, and then what happens next? And then the policy conversation commences. With them at the center With of the them conversation. At the center. And because of the fact that they have seen how many they are, mm. they realize they have agency, they have power. So in, we have power in our numbers. Yes. So that's, that's the main message, mm. that uh, because we are this many, we have this much power. Yes. And because we have this much power, we can then influence yes. our, what is the resources for our lives, the resources that are located for our lives, etc., etc. That's exactly. the, that's the dialogue. That, that's the dialogue that, 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 that must happen. That must happen because that dialogue case. has been happening. Yeah, but with no ASMs in the. Room. Where are where are you saying that? Where are, where are you saying they are they are in El El, El You are in Taita Taveta. Taita Taveta. In a place okay. called Kasigao, which is very deep. Kasigao. Okay. Okay. All right. You are in uh, Kakamega County. Mm. In Vigia County, mm. in Miguri County. Right. Currently, right now, there's a tragedy that is ongoing mm. where I, a man has been stuck for the last almost 14 days. Mm. Um, his name is Tom Okwach. In mines? In a mine that collapsed. Mm. Those sort of things should never happen. Mm. But these guys are literally going to mine in sleep. What are their numbers in, 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 in approximation, like in the country? We think that there's more than 10,000 miners. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's. I mean, even if there's one, <laughs> you know, it, yes. it, it's still it's still a It's life. still significant. It's yes. still significant. But hearing that there are like ten thousand, um, you know, miners uh, mining gold, mine, mining gold, whose life are at risk. Yes. And there there needs to be policy shifting conversation around them. Exactly. Certainly. All right. Uh, so. That's just one example of what data, open data for like a particular marginalized group in the country is able to do. Mm. Do you have an example of like what else you've been able to do with open data now that you say you've worked with like all 47 yeah. county governments with time and who, ha who also have been like your other partners other than the main county governments themselves and also other than the initial funding partner? So, you know, the interesting thing is at some point mm. in 2015, mm -hmm. uh, after the Sustainable Development Goals were launched, yeah. um, we, when we were thinking about it, we realized that, you know, the best way to achieve this is the Sustainable Development Goals have been designed to say no more hunger yeah. or water for everybody, clean drinking water for everybody. Right. But how do you, prov how the president from his state house cannot provide clean drinking water for everybody because mm. he can't know everybody. He can only provide the resources mm. and hope that the resources are spent to make sure that everybody gets the water. Yeah. But the SDGs are saying leave no one behind. Mm. What that is then suggesting is that every single human being must be catered for. So if we are saying clean drinking water for everybody, at the end of the day, everybody in the world must have a glass of drinking water. Yeah. That's what that... That's a gold standard. That's yeah. a gold standard. That's mm. what we are aiming for. Mm. If that's what we are aiming for, then... Uh, and that's just one of the... Of the 17 of goals. Of the 17, yeah. So if that's what we want, then we must go and start counting people at the local level. Mm. So we talked with, like this, with a guy called Chief Karaoke. He's now late from last year. The, 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 the tweeting the, chief. The tweeting chief? <laughs> yes. All right. We worked with him and we said, but Chief, this is what can happen. He says, yeah, but come and count my community. 
So we went to his location, we talked to the Nyumbakumi leaders mm. and convinced them, taught them about data. And then he said, guys, do you think we should go and collect data in your community? Mm -hmm. He said, yes, we can. Mm. And what they did is they went and collected data, house by house, on everything, mm. on water, on health, on education, on steamer, on mm. you name it, they collected data on everything. Mm. And once they had collected that data, mm. they then went back mm. um, to, um, we, we then put that data in a digital format and then sent it back to them. Mm, mm. And they were able to look at that data and realize mm. that when we started talking to them, mm. they thought that the problem in their community was water, period. Mm. Now they realize that ev almost every homestead has water just outside, almost outside 500 meters away. Mm. But the problem that they're having is there's lots of bilhazia, cholera, etc., etc., mm. and that is caused by clean drinking water. Mm -hmm. While they were thinking about that, an American organization came and they wanted to build a borehole and the community was able to say, hold your horses. Mm. We don't want yet another borehole. Mm. If you want to solve our problems, mm. then just make sure that um, just make sure that we have clean drinking water. Mm. So this American organization went back. Mm having been rebuffed by the community, mm. which is not usual. Normally we see Mzungus and we say, yes! Mm. Mm. But in this case, they said, no. Mm. Go back and re rethink this. Mm. This is what we need. Mm. And that's driven by the data. Mm. So the company organization came back, I think, after... I want to say they came back after maybe a, a, a few months. Yeah. And they came back with water filters for every single... Everyone household. Oh, wow. Because they knew there was 12,557 mm. households. Mm. They brought 12,560. The, the, the data then counted. Mm. You see? Mm. And they then gave it individually to every single person. Mm. Mm. And once every single person received, mm. now you can, as a, as a, as a country, mm. you can be able to look at that data mm. and say, in Lanetu Moja location, 100% mm. of the community has clean drinking water. Yeah. Now, if you could imagine that you could replicate that among 4,000 locations yeah. in the country, mm. and that you could see the every location has become blue because mm. of the fact that it has water. Mm. Mm. That's the goal mm. that we wanted to do. Mm. And mm. so we have gone that and done it in different mm. places, mm. in different counties. Mm. And that, for us, is a very big part of mm. what mm. our journey is mm. as, mm. as uh, mm people in this space. Mm, mm.